not being rich. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Fucking rich. I want my fucking money. Griffin, I want my fucking money. Need a bloody red Monday. Uh, what? What was it? Uh, no, I'm free. Like honestly, it was just two days with the arm. I felt like I was mutating. <laughs> no, I I only have like a small, you know. No, my my arm is it was a little red, but just not nothing more than just uh the pain in the arm. And maybe I had a little fever yesterday, but nothing that a uh a small Advil doesn't fix. No, no, mine, mine. I can even. I can literally. I can literally touch it and no pain. Yeah. Bro, everything is going so quick on Wall Street right now. It's it. You know, I feel like this doctor, yeah, because you follow him on LinkedIn too. Um, and I feel like, he, yeah, I feel like he's going to come up one morning saying, look, we already filed, the court accepted, and they're liquidating Evergrande starting tomorrow. Like, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling like he's going to do that. Like, he's going to drop that in the market, like, in a second. Like, nobody will expect it, and it was just going to be there. All right. What's up, I everybody? Like Hold on, Francisco. Sorry to cut you off, brother. We had no microphone communication with YouTube. Luckily, my guys over here were able to give us a heads up. Thank you, everybody, uh, for giving us. We had a little little issue there. Whatever. My name is Boss Blunts, Marcel Klinovic. Welcome to the chat. Hanging out here with my guy, Francisco, Silverback, Sigma, Ken, Ken Griffin, and everybody else. I think Charles Payne's even in this motherfucker. We're, we're riding pretty deep today. Uh, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, but Francisco, I know they could hear you. Luckily, they just couldn't hear me. So, uh, oh. you can you can continue, brother, if you remember what you were talking about there. I, 
I was saying that I feel like because uh, Dr. Messler has been pretty quiet and he already talked, the, he already said on, uh, through his profile, through his personal account on uh, LinkedIn, I feel like he's going to, he already said that he already, he was he was going through meetings with a couple lawyers firms and I feel like this thing is just going to be like a one Friday thing in the morning and look, the court accepted and Evergrande is going to be liquidated starting, I don't know, Friday. And that crap is going to kill the whole market. Dr. Marco Metzler used to work for the Fitch rating agency, yeah. the agency that downgraded the United States back in 2013. Yeah, then he went independent. Right. Now he, he owns his own, I believe, his own rating agency, which is pretty damn cool, especially since he knows the jig is up with Evergrande. He's put his foot down. This guy, Dr. Marco Metzler, for you guys that don't that don't know, uh, he works. He owns his own bond rating agency. Used to work for Fitch, and is calling for the uh, complete insolvency and bankruptcy of Evergrande Bank due to their current issues, uh, not paying their notes. They said they did, but the Chinese Communist Party owns the the media. You know, I was reading one of these comments. Well, one of the comments somebody posts on oh, his one second. post. One second. For reference, none of the bondholders had confirmed receipt of payment. Continue, please. For those that didn't know, I wanted yeah, to say Yeah, uh, in the I was reading uh, the the comments. You know, there's always something interesting on in the comments, and one of the and one person say to him, "Look, uh, Clearstream can probably take four days. Blah blah blah. You know, the waiting period until the payment is clear because they're the clearing house for Clearstream. They're the, the clearing house." To yeah, record. so basically, gotcha. so they, they were saying the he was telling Dr. Messler, yeah, they take four days, so you probably are within that day, that range, so pr that's why you haven't received a payment. But you're making claims, uh, Evergrande uh, has not made that payment, but we have seen that Bloomberg confirmed that they have made it, blah blah blah. And he said, and he was like, no, we have not received anything. We and and he even posed a router uh, article saying that all the investors have not received the payment. And then he replied to him that this guy, but this guy who was making the claim to him, he was like, yeah, but you're making a defamatory uh, claim because uh, that doesn't mean that you have not received the payment. There's it's just in the waiting period, in the clearing house period. Nonsense. And, why can't they and, confirm, right? Why can't they give us a yeah. yes or a no? And then he wait one week yep. and say, look, your four days is bullshit. There you go. He <laughs> gave them twice as long and they still couldn't come up and tell them yes or no. A simple answer, right? Yeah. Even, I don't know if you saw the, the post on LinkedIn uh, from the clear the CEO from Clearstream. I don't mm. know if you saw it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I sure did. He, yeah, he was like, we cannot answer to an individual, but we have to answer uh, for an institution to come up with a request about it. So it's like, look, we have already talked to our bank. The bank has already made a claim to them and they don't come and face us. I mean, so to me, this is like, you know, they're just playing. They're trying to buy time. Oh, absolutely. That's Our all it is. Clearstream, they're trying to buy as much time as they can. To continue to keep moving this you know one thing that i find funny is that the owner of evergrand sold his assets supposedly to keep the company to pay some bills and keep the company from going insolvent wouldn't that be a good excuse to sell off all your position while the company still has some value and retain some money yep so. but it's garbage it's it, it's like they're trying to got to buy garbage over garbage but they think, I th yeah, they're still well aware that other people are going to continue to buy it. And they want to leave bag holders, plain and simple. And, and the contagion is bad. Like, I was reading a couple of his uh, posting. You know, there's people saying that he's phony, blah, blah, blah. But look, he's putting, he's doing what many people are not doing. He's putting his name in yeah. front of the, of, of, the, of the bullet, like on the front of the gun. He's exactly. putting his name in the one. Protection. He's doing what we are doing, except he's in a position as Managing a rating agency. Bad. Like I was reading a couple make a of difference. his uh, posting. Yeah. And you know, there's people yeah, saying, saying that he's, he's putting the face in front blah, of the blah, old blah, cameras. Look, 
He's that's cool. not something we're doing. We're just commenting, but he's doing that. He's putting the face. Exactly. So to so to say that he's funny, uh, he's uh, he's a liar, blah blah blah. I mean, it, it takes a lot of guts. So you have to have the you know the black. I mean the 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 poker hand on your on your side. So if you're gonna play those cards, and yeah. And like one of his posts, and he had made several posts. Like one of them is the Royal Bank of Canada, how how exposed they are. Uh, I don't know if you saw in football, even the this the Italian team, it's one of the most affected one. Uh, there was a uh, Goldman Sachs that had been buying real estate uh, debt from China. They uh, what was the other thing? I mean, it's a couple things. Ah, the tether thing from crypto. Tether? People Thank you. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to cut you off. Tether stating that they were not linked to Evergrande. And we know that's complete bullshit, as Tether has already had previous issues stating that they, were, uh, that they, were, they had enough assets and they didn't even have a fraction, not even one-tenth of the assets that they said they claimed to have. It's crazy, man. Like he came up with a with a picture saying, "Look, we're here in the office." Uh, Tether says they're located at, and it's fu a fucking mailbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Funny. But then you know, the guy from from this office from Tether, he came up and replied, "No, you're in the wrong place. We are in the next office, in the second floor, whatever. Nonsense. But we are not gonna. But we're not gonna give you an an audience." Because we found you on in legit uh, legitimate, whatever he said. Yeah. Oh wow, they so claimed was he like, was illegitimate. Doc yeah. Wow. Illegitimate for that, I was like, why don't you just face him? Yeah, because they know better. They know better. And you know why was the reason? Because he knows that tether it's backed up by re by Chinese real estate notes. So if the Chinese market goes shit, what do you think goes shit? Tether. And then what goes shit if Tether uh, backs up Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Tether and Bitcoin and these Evergrande the notes are linked. And, and it's it's going to destroy a lot of crypto as well, which a lot of people don't want to believe. But I think that's the case. I think it's pretty clear cut. I think it's very clear cut, actually. Which fucking sucks. But uh, on Friday, uh, November 26th, we had a short, you know, we had a half day on the market pretty much, uh, as but everything was getting obliterated here, not just China. You know, the UK markets were getting destroyed. Check out, uh, you know, some of these uh, airline companies and, and other futures. The FTSE, for example, over in the UK. This is something that we saw Wait. over and over again. And you know what? We, we can come back to this topic, but we need to switch gears here a little bit. There's a lot of yeah. chat. There's a lot of people bringing up right now the absolute ridiculous idea that Lou brought up of people no longer buying AMC and GameStop. Now, the reason it's ridiculous is because not having any volume on the stock is not going to hurt hedge funds and market makers. It's going to hurt us. Because every time these stocks run, it's when volume overwhelms them. Plain and simple. Buying on dark pools is dumb. Buying on lit exchanges and lit markets, such as the IEX or ARCA, that's good. Those are good ideas. But too many people are buying on dark pools, and that is what I believe Lou may have been referencing. Now, I want to like the guy... But he clearly doesn't understand, and I don't want anybody to get upset that I'm saying this, but he doesn't understand that if all of us listening right now and everybody that watches Lou stopped buying right away, it would still not make an impact on the price. We, uh, too much of an impact on the price. And it would, it would definitely be a negative impact, not a positive one whatsoever. It is pretty clear, guys, okay? Dilution is not a concern when you're buying a few shares here or there. The reason being, 
Yes, there are more shares out there, but we already know we own the float five or 10 or maybe even 20 times over at this point. We already know there's almost 5 million retail investors and we've all got, the majority of us have a shitload of money in companies like AMC and GameStop. When you have a black swan event, like the collapse of the stock market due to things like Evergrande, Contagion, Chinese property developers, the United States real estate bubble, and, and you know a lot of uh, bonds worldwide. I've showed you that, and we've, we've talked about that in, in depth for hours, right, Francisco and guys? Yeah, Silverback? Yeah. Uh, you know, we weren't the only ones, actually, that are addressing the housing bubble, too. Of course, I mean, a lot of people know, are. Bank of Canada and uh, the German uh, Central Bank, excuse me, the, the Central Bank of Canada and Central Bank of Germany both admitted in, and warned of a housing bubble in both places yesterday or today, actually. So, you know, that it, it's like I don't when the rest of the world is going to kind of admit to all this. You don't hear crap about the the the. Uh, the bonds that are that are being defaulted out of Asia, it's it's like that's not made news hardly at all compared to to, to everything else. They keep it really um, quiet. But if you were, yeah, but if you would have looked three weeks ago, uh, you started seeing a little bubbling, and then the last week or two, we've been talking for a while now. I said wherever the you know however energy goes, that's how the market goes. And about three days ago. Everything started aligning to where we were starting to see big dips in energy, coal, heating oil, oil, uh, oil and gas, uh, massive, massive lining up. And, uh, you know, it was a precursor to what we saw today. You know, now we saw a 13 percent retracement on energy, and that includes coal. That includes everything except natural gas. Natural gas was the only one that that stood out uh, and, and it was in the green. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about o OPEC nations. I'm talking, it was everywhere. Tell us more about these oil futures. I know Francisco had a pretty good tweet about it that I was trying to find again here. Uh, it looks like uh, crude oil futures uh, dropped tremendously on Friday, the 26th, Black Friday, uh, as well as everything else on the market. And if you look at the stochastic rsi it is definitely bearish with the i i, I took this the screenshot this is oil crude futures that uh somebody had posted and i and i just kind of drew on here to show you illustrate you this is the pot rsi the blue is the positive rsi stoke rsi if you will and the yellow slash orange is a negative uh, that's a reduction in volume. So when you have these so low in this field, say in the 25 and below range, and the positive RSI blue crosses under the negative RSI, you're going to expect to see a further retracement in the price, most likely. Uh, but again, it's just technical analysis and who knows what kind of fuckery is going to happen. Uh, after hours, we're an interesting, interesting shit on the, on the 26th. It, it was... It was something else. I, was I just think, features, for example, you know, went from $81 to $68 17 cents. It's a pretty big dip. I mean, every single major retracement correction or crash has been preceded by a, an energy dive. And I That's think right. that if, if we had a 13% Delta to the negative today, I think by Monday, we may double that. Uh, that's my own. Say that in point. English. It's not fine. <laughs> Say it in English. We're gonna fucking drop off the ledge on Monday. Oh, uh, energy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you expect the stock market to take a bit of a beating again? Yeah, huh? don't don't work out because the shit will hit you in the face. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I thought. Thank you very much for putting it so eloquently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty explicit. Yeah, definitely is. Yo, where the fuck is Elmo? Oh, man. I don't know. He's uh, on Ken Griffin. He's, he's on his... Chasing his ass. 
So when do you guys expect uh, negative betas to start kicking in? The moment the market crashes. Yeah, well, I think we, when you start, yeah, probably when you start seeing the first of margin calls. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there were margin calls today, but there were not, nobody that we know of defaulted because we haven't heard about it on the news. Right. Okay. To the best of our knowledge. But, but it's, just, it's like a quick, slow bleed, you know, like to every dollar it, that the stock market loses in value, hedge funds and market makers' assets lose value. That reduces their margin position. That's why they call it a margin call. Because they literally get called up also and they off. have 69 minutes, I'm sorry, 59 minutes and 59 seconds to come up with X amount of dollars to meet their margin requirement. And if they don't, it's a default. And automatically, the and it's, it's, can start buying that shit back for them. Take over their books and say, all right, time to fix this fuck up and start buying back and selling off assets to close out short positions of these hedge funds in order to bring them into a positive. Yeah, they're also going to be every every point that it goes down in the red. They're also reducing their liquidity. It's you know they're the the stocks that they have that they could they could actually make liquid are decreasing in value because of sell offs. It's it's a vicious circle. Yeah, the longer they hold them, the less value they have. But if they cash them out now, they just lost that five x leverage on that asset because now they're just holding one x that amount in cash. Because the, le the leverage comes when they buy the asset, such as, you know, Apple stock, for example, or Amazon stock, which is Amazon is one of uh, Citadel's favorites. They have a lot of calls and puts on Amazon. They're hedging. That's what they do. I fully believe. Hey, my man, Peter Han. It's good to see you, brother. We need to get you on the Discord next time for the, for the think tank. Uh, Peter Han, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. He, he believes that the market may continue to crash Monday. See what the COVID news does this weekend. I f was literally just thinking that same thing, my man. You took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, I think the COVID news has a lot to do with it, even though I don't believe that it has. I think it's kind of a bit of a, you know, layering on the cake, you know, like layering uh, some icing on the shit sandwich. They're, they're blaming what's currently happening in the stock market. Yeah, that's, that's, their, that's their shot heard around the world, right? Right, so now they got a reason for people to start selling off, and it doesn't seem like it's due to the Fed printing 40% of all the money in existence last year. I'll tell you, another 800-pound gorilla in the room no one's talking about. China just had a seven-week lockdown on, on their ports for quarantine. China had another lockdown on ports? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, they announced it today, seven weeks quarantine. Oh, fuck, man. I got to talk to my guys oh, about yeah. this. Yep. That sucks. I got a, I Man, got a lot of angry freight forwarders Twitter, so, what, <laughs> and manufacturers. Yep. Whoops. Well, I'm sorry, guys. We've discussed it before in previous videos, like our supply chain videos. This problem that we're currently seeing with the ports and 100 ships or 80 ships sitting off the coast of L.A. and being backed up all around the world, it's not going to be over this year or next year or even the year after that. This is a three to four year problem you know, to solve, to bring back into a half decent shape. We're gonna be seeing 50 plus ships in LA for the next two years at least. And we're not gonna be getting into a decent situation in the supply chain market as far as you're able to get your shipments on time. Containers aren't taking six months to come from China or don't have to wait two months to a month or two to unload and finally pull a container from the back of the yard that's been covered up by a hundred more. But uh, there's a lack of employees for these crane operators. The Port of LA is open 24 hours, but they only have one crane driver at night. So who fucking cares? Who cares if they're open, if they only got one crane driver and the rest is just uh, robotic cranes moving around. Damn. Sorry, guys, but it's going to be a rough one. I have to be honest with you on that one. As far as the supply chain uh, metrics go here. Where the hell did this go? My apologies. I'm looking for my boy, Dr. Marco Metzler's post, but I can't actually find it. No matter, though, we'll just move right on. 
Who checked out the uh, reverse it, repurchase, guys? Nobody checked out the reverse repurchase on Friday? Well, yeah, it was like, what was it, 1.47 trillion, I think? 1.47? 1. 1. 1.451 trillion, 1. trillion again? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yet again. And uh, quite a few counterparties, too. I believe 74, if I recall. But it's actually not shown on the Fred. I got to go to the New York Fed website to get it. It's funny the way that works. What do you think about uh, Chase uh, pissing off the Chinese about uh, their little uh, statement about out, outlasting the Chinese uh, Communist Party? And then China turning around and saying that they'll delist uh, the entirety uh, off of our exchanges? I hope China does take DD off the exchanges. It'll crash the market a little bit more. Oh. But- the fuck you no do? no they're talking about all of them they said that they would remove they would have I, I think i think they named off 30 securities they'd take off the market and that is why and some like, people that's why some economists are calling for up to an 80 percent correction in the stock market i yeah. call it bullshit i want the whole thing to go down i think 80 no, you know would be the whole thing, thing. Right. But if if they pull off of the market, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that Chase pissed them off. I think it has to do with the fact they don't want to see the fragility of their own markets. Right. I think maybe they're uh, they're, like they're the trying not to show their hand. The big money is pushing the price not to tank, but at some point there will be this macro shock. Right now we're seeing with the new bi- uh, variant, but that's just the that's just the uh the peak of the iceberg once like i was saying once the chinese team breaks our market that then it's something that will it will just unfold everything and that bigs will go nuts yep and there were well, there I mean, was 74 see, counterparties see. today as well I mean, you Even saw the big, currency the currency issues today too i mean russia's yeah. uh, money was down everybody's was oh yep. yeah without a doubt we're going to be seeing the fiat and but, the crypto. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, year. the Europe, European market uh, had a 3.7 negative closed. 3.7% of the European market mm-hmm. lost. There goes $2 trillion. The Dow was down 1,000 yep. points today. There goes another $2 trillion. Wiped off the global equities right off the top of the face of the earth. I hope you didn't lose money, but if you did, so did a lot of other people. I didn't. I, I was hedged. Shit. My call's printed, but I'm going to sit on them a little bit longer. Yeah, we did have 74 counterparties over there. I have one th- one trillion four hundred and fifty one billion. This would be, I believe, almost 90 days in a row that we've been over one trillion dollars per day on the reverse for purchase operations. That's pretty hefty. One trillion dollars for almost three months now, three months straight. In two thousand and eight, we were at like two hundred billion. Two hundred billion, not one point four five trillion every day. So that yeah, that's definitely not a good sign. It is down too. A few last week, it was in the one one point five seven five trillion range and the reason that it's down now is because banks are losing money they're losing liquidity here's a post that um, I did on the 19th on LinkedIn showing that we were at 1.575 trillion and that was 70 days straight so today would actually be I'm sorry I, I overestimated a little bit today would be about 77 76 or 77 days straight over 1 trillion dollars the reverse for purchase, and as you can see here, this is the graph in uh, billions of dollars. What's up, Sergio? Yeah, thank you very much to my mods and, and for everybody keeping it cool in the chat. Appreciate you guys. Uh, do I see this taking another year? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about AMC or GameStop. I don't. I don't see this take another year because I see the situation getting worse with the stock market and it's going to cause liquidity to further lose value. And that's going to mean that shorted stocks are going to run when hedge funds get margin called. It's, it's something that happens every day. 
Guys just don't realize it because they don't come out and tell us. They don't tell us that you're right in any way. Another thing I wanted to show you guys here in regards to the unemployment numbers that we touched on earlier, uh, we've got a ridiculous number of people unemployed uh, and the number that's not in the workforce, this is a screenshot that we took when we were discussing it here on the think tank uh, just a couple days ago, I believe, is people that did not actively look for work in the last four weeks but don't have a job. So five weeks ago, they looked for a job, but not four weeks ago or less. So they don't count towards unemployment, for example. And it's also is people who want a job, searched in the last 12 months, and were available to take a, a job during the reference week, but have not looked for work in the past four weeks, etc. Those who did not actively look for work in the prior four weeks, again, for because if they were ill, so if someone had COVID and couldn't go to work or didn't look for work, they would not counted on the unemployment numbers that the Biden administration is telling you. So this right here, 99,872 people was October of 2020. In October of 2021, that is now over 100,000. But guess what, guys? This is a number in the thousands. So you got to multiply this by 1,000, all right, as you can indicate here. So you got to take that number, 99,000, and multiply it. So that means 99,872,000 people were not working in the labor force in October of 2020. And it's only gotten worse. So it got really bad during COVID. And it's continuing to get worse a year later. There are more people not in the workforce that are not being included on the unemployment numbers. However, supposedly unemployment is getting better. In addition, that numbers. Yeah, they're lying to that us. Number, they're, that they're, numbers they're, underrepresent. Go ahead. I said that number is underrepresented. There's a lot of people that don't qualify for unemployment, so they never go draw, so they're not counted in those statistics. Yep. And this is also just all based off a survey. They, they just survey some people and expect them to give honest answers. In October, employment decreased in local government and state government education. That means teachers, bus drivers, etc., by 43,000 and 22,000 respectively. Employment changed little in private education. So those teachers didn't go really to go. Not only one third, less than one, one quarter of them went to private education, basically. The rest of them are, have left education for the month of October. As well as since February of 2020, COVID, employment is down by 370,000, you know, teachers and educators in local government. And an additional 205,000 in state government. And an additional 148,000 in private schools. Come on, guys. You can see it's fucking hey, is there clear. Any figures? Is there any figures for uh, how many we've lost due to mandates? Well, these are just unemployment and, and people that are uh, the number of people unemployed but have not looked for a job in the last four weeks, they do not count as unemployed, all right? They, they're counted as not in the labor force. So see, that's why it says here. Uh -huh. So none of these 100 million people are being counted in the unemployment numbers, even though they need a job. This is not Until okay. January. <laughs> Wait till January when all the seasonal workers are done working too. That's only going to increase in January. Mm -hmm. January. Seasonal is going to make it even worse. You're absolutely right, brother. People are going to be and looking. Did you see the? Uh, did you see the with the new variant? If uh, if Europe goes lockdown, inflation is going to get steeper. Inflation will absolutely get worse because supply chain issues will. Take, it will take longer to ship ocean containers and air freight and trucking and everything else. You know, all this will take longer to get to the store shelves, into your house, and especially overseas. So it will cause inflation to get worse. Less people will be working. So more people will starve and die. And more artificial money will need to be printed to stimulate 
what little economy is, is available. And that's going to continue to deflate the value of all dollars, of all fiat. Not a bad way to uh, get rid of your debt, huh? Inflate it all the way. Not a bad way at all, right? I mean, a lot of people get screwed and harmed, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying, like, nice way to reset your economy and have a retraction and at the same time, you know, cover your debt to 10% of what the real value originally was. Amen, brother. You know, in October, I mean, 3.8 million people, I didn't mean to, to cut you off there, but 3.8 million I'll people reported that they were unable to work because their employer closed or lost business due to the pandemic. Right? And 13, only 13% 13 of them received some pay from their employer. And among those not in the labor force in October, remember the people that don't count as unemployed, 1.3 million people additionally were prevented from looking for work due to the pandemic. Again, more people unemployed that they're not counting in the statistics. It's pretty simple shit, right? Kind of seems engineered, don't it? Yeah. Let's take a look at the United States Treasury. What a hot mess. Whoops, I put daily yield curve in there. I didn't mean to do that. Francisco, you know anything about reconciliation? I figured as a master's degree in economics, you might know a thing or two about it. Uh, at the moment, um, really, I think they're busy with the NADD, NDAA, oh, well, the Pentagon, the uh, budget thing. Uh, and also, they're busy with the uh, BBB thing on the Senate, but remember, they have until December 15th, so... The build I don't know. back Beijing plan where they're going to buy a bunch of where America is going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars to buy Chinese businesses and bonds and stocks. That one. Maybe. Hmm. The build back bullshit plan where they're going to hire 80,000 new IRS agents. Uh, seems like, yeah. Wow. Now, who do you think they're going to be going after? The 400 billionaires that live here? <laughs> Come on. No, every single one of us, man. Exactly. That's why you need 88,000 of them, because they're going to be going and scrutinizing anybody in the middle class. Once you're rich, the IRS won't touch you again. They scrap the IRS agents. Thank God, Cash. You are the man. Yeah, Democrats repeal it. Thank you. Thank you. There was so much information. This thing is 2,000 plus pages. You know how hard it is to figure out all the fucking details? I appreciate you, Cash. That's why you're a treasured member of the think tank. You are the man. So that we are not, we don't have to worry about these 80,000 new agents that was going to cost us 200, 300 billion dollars anymore. Cheers, brother. America. Um, the United States Treasury closing balance on Wednesday, November 24th, before Thanksgiving, was $141 billion. Ooh, running out of money quick. $141 billion for a country that spends $500 billion a month with a revenue of only $200 billion. That's a $300 billion deficit. Peter, luckily, we did not have to worry about those uh, IRS agents, thanks to my man Cash over here, who just brought to my attention that the IRS agents portion of the Build Back Bullshit plan was uh, removed. So that is great hey. fucking news. Hey, what's the date set for for the, the debt ceiling thing again? Is it December 6th? December 3rd is technically the date where Janet Yellen said we would have enough money to last. But currently, we have a debt we have a debt due in the form of interest to another country on December 15th. So if by December so 15th... We're, we're literally two and a half weeks out from that. Yeah, and 
and six of those days are business are uh holidays and weekends yeah so so pretty much two weeks and a day now keep in mind reconciliation takes how long francisco how long does it take reconciliation for the democrats because we know the republicans aren't going to fucking help them a minimum two weeks two weeks two weeks minimum and they got two and a half right now, and I haven't heard them call an emergency session. I think reconciliation is out of the table. I feel like uh, McConnell is going to help them. <laughs> I disagree, brother. I don't think he is. I think they're going to let the Republicans are going to let the Democrats sink to the fucking ground, take our economy and stock market with it. They're already properly hedged. They already sold off their positions that they needed to sell. And it's going to secure the House, the Senate and the presidential election for the next the next coming term for the Republican Party. And I'm not a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal, but I just call it like I see it, and that's what that's what I believe wholeheartedly at this moment. Peter, I'd love to bring you up, but i got to get you in the Discord in order to do so, brother. Let me see. I can drop a link for sure, though. Drop a link in the chat. You, got, you are welcome to jump on in here. We did recently open it up to everybody uh, when previously it was a private chat. We still do some have some private rooms, but we like to communicate with people and investors uh, just to mm-hmm. keep in touch and to kind of know what, what other people's mm-hmm. thoughts are in the market. So if anybody wants to join the Discord, I'll drop a link over in the uh, YouTube chat. And uh, Peter, you're more than welcome to come up too, bud feel like I've been talking to you for so long on LinkedIn and Twitter and everything like that. But uh, the, the Discord is open to everybody and it is a nice alternative to traditional social media like Twitter in terms of uh, having a smaller community that's more focused on the, you know, the task at hand, if you will. If it's okay to call it that, you know, because I know I'm here to get fucking rich. I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't think you're dicking around in the stock market for chump change. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, Jeez. No. Ken Griffin, I want my fucking money. That's what I know for sure. All right, guys, I just got the chat open on YouTube. I'll drop this in here for you guys. Fucking repping your sweater right here today, man. <laughs> Had a conversation at the gym with a couple guys. That's awesome. You're wearing the, which which sweatshirt is it? Which which hoodie uh, is it? Uh, what? Well, the Wall Street one. The Wall Street cannabis one? Got, Fucking love yeah, that thing, which dude. Yeah, I got a few, few comments, which opened up conversation with a couple other people. Hey, were you talking about AMC? Hey, what's that? So I got a chance to talk to a couple other investors. Young guys, too, man. 22 years old, man. Got 1,300 shares, bro. Wow. <laughs> Just from a conversation yeah. at the gym because of that hoodie you were wearing? Dude, props to you, brother. My man, that's a oh, true yeah. silverback right there. Thank you, Funds Reaper. <laughs> yeah, if, if rep, some people, some, a lot of people are willing to like listen, and then they go out and do their own due diligence, or you know, look it up, or they probably heard it from a hundred people already, and they're just like, "Wow, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. I see what's happening." Well, it gave you an opportunity to talk to a couple of people, and then uh, you know, looking for information, and then say, "Hey, you know, why don't you go check out these couple of people, man, that do some streams? You know, try to try to learn and educate yourself a little bit more." That's cool. So Very had to represent my man. Appreciate your support of the channel too, man. Thank you, and of myself personally, you know, it means a lot to me. Very Thank cool. you. You guys don't have to watch, but yet you're all here hanging out with me on Black Friday, which is fucking awesome. You know, the whole reason behind us getting together in this Discord and in these channels and on YouTube and and Twitter is because we all want to learn more about the stock market, the situations that are currently happening, the damn manipulation that we as clear as day when you see those, you know, short ladder attacks, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. watch sales happening on the stock market. Everybody's wondering why this is happening. And it's as, as clear as a hedge fund and a market maker is not just about to give you their fucking money in a short squeeze. They're going to drag it out. I expect this to end soon, but I'm prepared for this to last another year or two. And I'm okay with that. That's the way that I feel about certain squeeze plays. And to each his own. To each his own, if you don't feel that same way. At the same time, 
I think that hedging for the market and the current issues that we're seeing in the economy, supply chain, real estate, vaccine mandates, COVID-19, and a lot of other plethora of issues, like global warming and things we won't even bring up as far as possible wars in the near future. Uh, things are looking very volatile and the volatility index is looking awfully sexy. I know my man Sergio Ortiz brought up in the last stream in YouTube chat here, which is why I love having it right up here, that his VIX streams, I'm sorry, VIX calls printed 18,000% profit margins. That's fucking awesome. I love to hear that. Fuck yeah. AMCA, Politics Exchange, more information coming soon. Founders Program coming soon. I'll give you more details ASAP once cleared by the attorneys for final delivery to the public. Sorry, this shit takes a while, you know. Giving these fucking... No, we're not giving... Sorry. I don't believe we are giving these billionaires money in that sense just by buying shares of stocks we love. They are using your money against you if you're buying on Robinhood or Webull in dark pools or Moomoo or Public or any of those other bullshit brokers. Your buying pressure is being withheld and they are not delivering on your shares immediately. They can withhold them up to 28 days. I think they have up to 35 days to deliver. So they can hold buying pressure from anybody on Robinhood for anywhere between 28 to 35 days if they want to and then funnel it all together in giant piles in a dark pool for the same fucking share price. And that's why people, we have emphasized as a community for so long to buy on lit markets, to buy on lit exchanges. Use a broker that does not use payment for order flow and dark pools and things like that. Or even if they do use dark pools and payment for order flow, at least go to somebody, not financial advice, this is just my opinion. It makes more sense to go to somebody such as Fidelity or Interactive Broker where you can choose where you want to funnel your money, such as directly to ARCA or IEX exchanges. You want lit exchanges like ARCA, like IEX, like the NASDAQ, options market, for example, if you're doing that. That's also an, a, a direct market. You want to try to stay away from the you know CBOE, CBOE and other dark pool related because it suppresses price discovery. So there's no dilution by buying there's already dilution because we own the float five or 10 or maybe even 20 times over at this point because there's almost 5 million plus investors in AMC and GameStop combined. Then it's, no matter what, you're looking at some crazy, crazy numbers regardless because when an NFT or a stock market collapse happens or an NFT release like an NFT dividend, that means that every single share needs to be repurchased. Every short position needs to be closed out, I should say. I, I said may have misstated that. So all their short positions need to be closed out. And all those synthetic shares need to be bought back. And all those failures to deliver that have been hiding on the options chain, those will now have to be closed out too. So when you see married puts on the options chain for January 2023 and 2024, and you're wondering why there's so much money out there, because that's where market makers and hedge funds are putting it to hide the short interest that they have as failures to deliver on the options chain. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, I'm sorry, you got to go do some more reading on the stock market and the basic mechanics of the way that liquidity works. I'm sorry that Lou is wrong, but he is. I hate to fucking break it to you guys. The, he is only half right in what he's saying. Dilution has been happening. Dilution occurs. But not because we're buying. That's because naked shorts are being made. Okay? Naked calls are being sold by market makers and hedge funds. Not by us. So no matter what, buying pressure on markets, markets is going to provide positive price action and positive buying pressure. Come on. And I understand it's complicated. But do some more fucking research if it doesn't make sense to you. Jesus fucking Christ. I've had enough of this talk about Lou fucking guy hey even if uh even if he, this guy it's something else hey even if there was any legitimacy to his something his claim i mean like it's yeah your some, made it's halfway there to go uh -huh, i yeah. mean it, 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 you should have made it like months ago because i mean like if there's anywhere near the amount of synthetics that we think they are we're already diluted 
beyond way beyond you know exactly and we know that it sold five or ten times the float because we've seen the numbers from very variety of things we've seen what happened back in january we saw that on january 27th they had to pull the buy button and go position close only over a multitude of around 13 or 14 different broker dealers in conjunction with collusion with citadel according to multiple lawsuits and other allegations in which retail has lost hundreds of millions probably billions of dollars and hedge funds made the opposite. The hedge funds made that money and then some profiting off of us. So we know the manipulation is there and then they needed to do that back then to stay solvent. And this is a stay liquid, I should say. What's up, brother? No, I was going to say I'm going to take my leave, man. All right, brother. Have a great night. Take. See you, uh, everybody. Appreciate take it. Take it easy, brother. My man Francisco got the jab. He got the jab today, so he's a little, uh, he's done for the day. After a heavy workout as well. <laughs> One last well, thing. at least he's okay, man. Everything good with him. No doubt. No, no falciality for me, bro. <laughs> One last thing I wanted to bring up is uh, my boy Corey AMC brought up the credit rating for Zhang Lang Holdings. They went from a B plus to a. <laughs> They went from a B plus plus to a B plus minus, and the next step is B and then B minus or something like that. Yeah, interesting. He looked up 20 different real estate companies in China, and they have a rating of zero one at this point with a B plus credit rating and, and looking to continue dropping. They're another developer, uh, real estate developer in China, and we did develop. We did do a whole video on this one as well. Uh, with the one of one of the Evergrande shareholders, the majority shareholder selling a majority of this position for a pre-loss of 10 billion uh, yuan, I believe that to be somewhere around two and a half billion American dollars, U.S. dollars. You know how many funds and banks are tied up in like Evergrande and some of these others? Oh, yeah. Large positions due in these bonds. Absolutely. Hey, uh, I'm going to put bit. pressure on the bank to uh, want to. Go ahead. I want to hear it, brother. Might need to recall some cash for some other people they loan. You know what I mean? When these, yeah, because when you see crude oil futures and, and all these other futures, the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ futures and themselves, the actual index indices themselves, losing 2%, 3%, 5%, as well as this is occurring in the UK and China and you know Germany, for example. Uh, this is not an isolated incident. It's the beginning of the Great Reset. It's the beginning of the end. This is not a prediction to try to scare you. This is not a prediction to try to say, oh, look at me, I, I timed the market crash or anything like that. It's more so something that many people are discussing and that we've been talking about as well since January because I believe that people need to be aware about it in order to properly hedge themselves for the current madness that's about to come. What you saw with toilet paper shortages was nothing compared to what, we, what we're going to be facing soon. The price of steak that you're seeing now in your supermarket for a $25 a pound ribeye that used to be $10 a pound a few months ago is going to be looking at $40 or $50 a pound in a couple months. The inflation rate is going to maintain a steady upward trend. It's not great. Uh, if you guys want, we can open it up for you know five minutes of questions, and then we're gonna get out, we're gonna get out of here. Enjoy the rest of our Friday night. Uh, would love to answer any questions that you have. I know that there might have been a lot in the chat that I missed. I apologize if I did. There's hundreds of questions, and I can't possibly read every single one of them while maintaining a coherent thought, especially since it's late and we've been drinking all day. <laughs> uh, Rainier, welcome. I'm glad you joined the Discord, brother. Uh, if you join the Discord, everybody, I want you to make sure that. Uh, on the top left-hand corner, there's a little icon or little three lines. You click there, and you go. it starts you off in the welcome. You click something called Read This First. It's a channel that takes you into the rule section. Read the rules briefly. There are some deals there for the merch shop as well. If anybody wants links to the merch shop, that's also on there. Uh, pretty much keep it cool. No market manipulation, no bullshit. We just try to discuss the stock market, the economy, politics, and uh, you know we, we keep it lighthearted. Uh, you know, try to keep things uh, without getting too serious, you know. So if you want to join us, feel free to come on over uh, to the Discord. 
it, it doesn't cost any money, by the way. I'm not like trying to sell you anything. I just wanted to put it out there. Let me take a look over here, guys. Sorry. I'm going to cycle right back over to these super fast scrolling uh, text messages over here and chat messages on the screen. But yeah, you're right, Peter. Lou's story was incomplete. Thanks so much for bringing that up on, on Twitter because you were absolutely right. And it seems like we kept getting the same questions over and over again. And uh, it's kind of tough to, to reply to the same kind of questions you know, from a hundred different people in direct messages or on Twitter, we try to answer it as openly as possible. Sergio, thanks for doing a great job as a mod, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't know about RBC, brother. I don't know really Royal Bank of Canada. I think they're going to be fine, but they're probably going to take a massive hit as well. I'm more concerned about Goldman, Goldman Sachs possibly being the next Lehman Brothers. Bank of America probably being the next Lehman Brothers. As a matter of fact, one last thing we should take a look at before we head out is the macroaxis.com uh, Bank of America bankruptcy score. There are two different kinds of shares for Bank of America, standard and preferred. Looking at the preferred shares using the probability of bankruptcy analysis for macroaxis.com, it is currently sitting at a strong 75% probability that is pretty fucking deep, guys. <laughs> and a lot of it's got to do to the fact that they're ridiculously over leveraged and that the top five, the top four banks own 88.9% of all total derivatives, including those with a negative balance. 88.9% of $426 trillion worth of derivatives. $426 trillion. Hmm. For research on who you're banking with and who you're having your money sit with. Yeah, and people say that they, they, they feel very happy with the FDIC. But the thing about the FDIC is uh, they could take up to, I believe, a couple of years. Five years. To pay. How long? I think it's the last time I'd read it was a few years, several years ago. It could take up to five years to pay you out total. But. The FDIC could take up to five years to give you your 250,000 measly insured dollars that they have out of X amount they yeah. have in there. So you should be very careful with how you to handling your cash. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. So you should probably speak to a financial mm -hmm. advisor that is not going to be making money hand over fist off you if by holding your assets under management. You know, find somebody you mm -hmm. can consult with basically. <laughs> They may have changed the time frame, but it, it's not, you can't get all your money at once. You know, that keeps the runs, the runs on the banks from happening. You only be able to mm -hmm. take out a certain amount. Yeah. Um, tell dog, I did try to set up a chat with Al. Uh, we kind of got conflicting schedules, but we're going to try to set up a YouTube video. There was a little bit of an issue with his, the way he added up the failures to deliver because I like to respect Al from, uh, Al from Boston, the YouTuber and Twitter uh, user. Uh, a lot, however, he, this is no, I, I respect him fully. However, regarding the video that he made about 50 billion synthetics, there is a little bit of an issue with that and the fact that he added up data that was already aggregate data. So the data from the F, from the FTDs on the, on the FINRA and SEC websites, they're added to and removed from every day. So you don't have to add up every day. It changes. But again, that failures to deliver, guys, the one piece that Al from Boston was missing, if you watch that video about the synthetics, the one piece he was missing was the final story, is that these failures to deliver, before they have to be, in order for them to be rolled or closed out on, they're kind of rolled, they're, they're repurchased as other futures positions. You know, they could be rolled over in futures contracts, could be rolled over in ISDA contracts, equity total return swaps, right? They could be covered in many different ways, as well as by hedge funds and market makers taking out married puts and call options and, and put options in order to hedge against that. Okay, so on that note, I think we've covered quite a lot in this video. It's going pretty long. Uh, I wish you all a great night, a great day. And God damn, we're going to be so fucking rich. Damn. God bless those that don't know what's going on. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Stock market. It's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one. It's time. fucking rich. I want my fucking money. I want my fucking money.
Do me a favor, drop a like or subscribe if you want. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a bleeder today, so fuck it, I ain't even looking. <laughs>